We are very pleased to be joined by the one and only David Sirota. Of course, he is the founder and what do you call yourself? Editor-in-chief of Daily Poster, which you can find. Where do people find you, David? Go subscribe now. Uh, dailyposter.com. And link awesome. in the description. So there we go. Um, as you are about to experience, David is doing incredible journalism over there with a great team and un uncovering stories that, you know, expose the way power really works in this country. So if you care about that kind of thing, um, you should definitely subscribe. And if you don't care about that, that sort of thing, I really don't know why you're watching this show. <laughs> anyway, um, your latest scoop, David, it's really quite a bombshell about Susan Rice. We can throw this up on the screen. So she stands to directly benefit from the construction of, what is this, like a tar, tar sands pipeline right. Um, that while the Biden administration got a lot of credit and um, a lot of applause for killing Keystone, they went ahead and greenlit this one, um, and she really stands to personally benefit. Just break down for us what you found here. Right. So Susan Rice is the domestic policy advisor, the top domestic policy advisor for Joe Biden. Uh, she has a, a number of, of serious ownership stakes in major companies with business before the federal government. Uh, one of the stakes that she owns is a stake in a company called Enbridge. Enbridge is the company behind the Line 3 pipeline that is that is designed to bring tar sands, very dirty, particularly dirty oil, down from Canada uh, into the American market. Uh, the Biden administration recently uh, sort of over the objections of environmental groups and indigenous uh, tribes approved and backed the Line 3 pipeline, uh, backed the Donald Trump policy of boosting that pipeline, the, the construction of that pipeline. Uh, and Susan Rice owns, as I said, a major stake in the company uh, that is uh, behind that pipeline. So Susan Rice, uh, while advising the White House on domestic policy, uh, has been in the White House advising on domestic policy when the president and the administration made a decision uh, boosting a company that she has an ownership stake in. And federal ethics regulators uh, have now sounded the alarm. Uh, we obtained a, a document uh, from the Office of Government Ethics in which they are effectively instructing her uh, to divest her holdings in Enbridge and in a, a number of other companies uh, whose uh, worth right now in the public markets is about 30 to $31 million. So she has, uh, we have a situation where you have ethics regulators saying uh, there is a serious problem here. Now, if that wasn't mind blowing enough, the other part of this is what I've called the corruption deduction. And mm -hmm. if you can believe this, that that because the ethics regulators have flagged this as a conflict of interest, uh, there is a special law on the books that allows government officials who have such conflicts of interest to cash out of the holdings and defer capital gains taxes. Wow. In other words, they get a tax break uh, <laughs> if they have a corporate conflict of interest when they sell off the holdings. Now, the argument is is that they that's worthwhile because that says that if the government forces you to divest your holdings, the government has to give you something. But I, I kind of look at it as like the federal government has created a special tax break uh, for corporate conflicted government officials uh, to to benefit from. That is stunning, David. I didn't know about the tax That's piece of it. Insane. And I, I want to reiterate the sums of money. We're not talking about a couple hundred grand. 32, right. that's a lifetime fortune, $32 yeah. million dollars from more than three dozen companies and one index fund. And this pipeline alone is a windfall of $2.7 million worth of shares. And having direct conflicts of interest like this is not new. Um, she's probably not the only person in the Biden administration, but it just goes to show how much confidence is undermined in the government, as you're saying. And not only does she, you know, not only does she have it and has to sell it now, but she's not going to pay taxes on it. And has she addressed this in any way, David? Uh, no, the White House did not uh, offer us any comment. Uh, right. the, uh, she has not. I haven't seen her say much of anything uh, about this. I mean, the amazing thing is, if you really think about it, is to go into that particular job where you are overseeing, and I want to underscore that, overseeing the White House Domestic Policy Council. You're basically making policy uh, on essentially everything domestic. To yeah. go into that job with those holdings, 
uh, not getting rid of those holdings even before you go into the into that job. I mean, it is just mind blowing. And look, there have been in the past, you know, Hank, this came up when Hank Paulson uh, became Treasury Secretary, uh, the use of the so-called certificates of divestiture uh, to defer uh, millions of dollars of capital gains taxes. I mean, it is just a kind of mind blowing that on top of having a conflict of interest, you then get essentially financially rewarded for having it. How is this legal? Yeah. Like, I mean, seriously, for someone to have this blatant conflict of interest in, you know, a policy area that, you know, she could very well have uh, advisory capacity, some power and, and jurisdiction over, how is this permitted and how common is this? Well, I think it's I think it's quite common. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure it's so common at the at the levels of holdings that we're talking about. And look, to be honest, the the federal law we're talking about, this tax loophole, you could argue that it was designed to try to find a, 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 a common ground here, a, a legitimate way to deal with this. Hey, listen, if the government orders you to divest your stock, uh, the government has to kind of uh, give you something to make it easier for you. But in this case, and in the case of Hank Paulson and people with, you know, tens, hundreds of millions of dollars, it essentially uh, offers them a way uh, to to evade the taxes that they would pay otherwise. In other words, it, I'm not saying Susan Rice did this, but if she had wanted to, if she had, and she had previously been in government, let's remember that, if she had wanted to, if she had thought through it, say, hey, listen, I got a bunch of holdings here. Uh, I don't really want to pay uh, capital gains taxes on this. I'm going to go back into government. I'm going to get myself a nice job for a couple of years, and I'm going to get myself a certificate of divestiture. I'm going to get the ethics regulators to say there's a conflict of interest, and then boom. That means I now get to use this special law that nobody else gets to use that allows me to defer capital gains taxes way into the future. It also yeah. just, it seems like the damage is already done because you had the conflict of interest when the decision about the permit right. was made. And uh, I'm sure the stock jumped on the news that this permit was going through. And so and now, now she gets it. to divest at the higher stock price. So it seems to me like in, in a lot of ways, the damage here has already been done. Um, David, I also wanted to get you to break down though for us another incredibly important story uh, that I know you've been working for a long time on, which uh, is how workers are being forced to fund the war on themselves. And this is happening through these pension funds where there's all kinds of incentives to, rather than just going for the kind of like normal, boring, solid, safe returns, there's incentives to, um, to get into all of these more exotic, elaborate, type of financial instruments that have uh, actually don't provide a better return. They're just way riskier, but they come along with this gigantic fees. So you're using worker money to prop up these Wall Street firms. Talk to us about what you found here and, and what's going on. Sure. I, I think a lot of people don't understand that, that the richest, most powerful people in this country are effectively funded uh, by teachers, uh, it's firefighters, sanitation workers, and other government workers through enormous public pension systems. There's right now, there's about $5 trillion in public pension systems. Uh, every uh, couple weeks, uh, the government workers put in money into their pension systems uh, to save for retirement. The question then becomes, well, what is done with all that money? Because it's a lot of money. And as we've seen over the last 10, 15, 20 years, a larger and larger share of that money is not going into basic plain vanilla investments like a Vanguard fund, a stock index fund. Uh, it is going into so-called alternative investments. And that's a fancy word or fancy term for private equity, hedge funds, real estate, all sorts of exotic investments. Now, you could argue that that's a good deal for the workers if those exotic uh, investments were delivering right. outsized returns to beat the market. But that's not what has been happening. Pension funds have largely been trailing uh, the market in many ways as they've invested more and more of this money in these investments. And the part of the reason why these investments uh, don't deliver outsized returns is because they charge, as you allude to, such enormously high fees. Uh, the, the two and 20 fee models, what it's called, 2% management fee, and then 20% uh, of the profits off of the investment go mm. to private equity firms. So this is, the, and, and by the way, uh, a lot of the billionaires who own private equity firms firms then use the so-called carried interest tax loophole to classify the earnings they're making off of workers' money uh, at a lower effective tax rate than everyone else in the economy pays. So wow. you have a situation where workers' money is essentially funding 
uh, the the uh, economic inequality. And by the way, uh, the investments themselves, many of the investments themselves are the kinds of investments that aren't good uh, for workers, right? I mean, you've got worker money funding a private equity industry that be has become famous for driving down wages, uh, famous for mass layoffs, uh, famous for, you know, behind the surprise billing scandal uh, in the United States, but behind uh, the, the health care crisis. So you have workers' money that is effectively financing all of this. And by the way, financing uh, the fossil fuel industry. A lot of this money is going into the fossil fuel industry that's creating the climate crisis. So what we need to understand is then we ask the question, well, why is this money going into these high fee investments if they're not delivering good returns for workers? Uh, wh what would be the reason for that? Well, the politicians who appoint the people who direct the pension money, those politicians, guess what? They get lots of money from Wall Street firms. They get, they are very uh, closely connected to the donor class that is making a huge amount of money on this. And again, we're talking, we're not talking about, you know, a couple million bucks here. We're not talking about a couple billion dollars here. We're talking about a $5 trillion pool of money. And as I always say, you know, some people, their eyes glaze over when they hear the word pension. You know who really cares about pensions? Uh, maybe, you know, a lot of viewers, viewers, listeners listening to this don't, you know, they, I don't really care about pensions. You know who cares about pensions? A handful of the richest and most yeah. powerful people in the world. No, absolutely right. David, you're the only person who does work like this and goes through the term sheets and all that and puts it into a way that we can understand. So I really encourage people to go and encourage to subscribe um, to The Daily Poster. Like I said, link is down there in the description. And we rely on your work for our show all the time. So thank you, man. We really appreciate it. Thanks, David. Great to see you. Thank you. Thank you both. You're very welcome. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We really appreciate it. You can become a premium subscriber today. Get the show an hour early. Listen to it. All of that. You guys know the drill. Lifetime members, we've been talking with the metallurgist, so that beautiful desk is going to look happening. soon. Very soon. Um, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We appreciate all of you. If you guys want to check all that out, link is down in the description for premium, etc. You can support our work here. We really appreciate it, and we love you, and we'll see you on Thursday. Thanks, guys. See you Thursday. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.